Hey, what's up guys, Bobo Rail here, and today I'm going to be talking about how I pick what gun to use in Vigor, in order to maximize my personal efficiency in encounters. So I'm going to give my two cents on the topic, let's jump right into this video. Picking a gun is so quick of a process for most people that it may seem like an insignificant decision, but in the Outlands it can be the difference between leaving with a full bag of loot and getting sent back to your shelter empty handed. Because of that, I want to be pretty thorough in my descriptions here, and so I've broken the process down into four different categories. Number one is your overall playstyle, number two is your immediate playstyle, number three is available resources, and number four is the environment. And I'll break down what all four of those are and their differences throughout the video, starting of course with number one, your overall playstyle. This is pretty self-explanatory. Once you've had at least a few hours of playtime, you should be forming some sort of idea about what kind of player you are. Do you prefer rushing and getting into close quarters? Do you like sniping? Or are you somewhere in between? In order to perform your best in each encounter, it takes a great deal of reflection about both your overall gains and your repeated mistakes. So you should always be learning and adapting from your last encounters whether they were good or bad in outcome. And so of course you'll learn with time what gun you're most comfortable with, and what class of gun you're most comfortable with, but this information is more essential when trying to find a gun to main. A topic I'll probably save for another video because there's a lot to talk about with that, but for now we're just going to be talking about picking your gun for your next immediate encounter. So your overall playstyle is more pointing you in the general direction, while other factors will narrow it down to a perfect choice, which segues into the explanation of number two, your immediate playstyle. This is a little more complicated, but I'll try my best to explain what I mean. If you're like me, and you're human, then you're not always going to be at peak performance, and even though you certainly have an overall playstyle, it might not always be consistent with how you're playing on that day. I consider myself to be more of a long range type player, but some days I get on and I can't hit sniper shots for the life of me, but I'm great with SMGs randomly. I can't always control that, and this is dependent on a countless number of factors from how much you sleep to if you've had any caffeine in the last hour. Anything that might affect your cognitive performance can impact how you play on a certain day, so it's important to gauge this factor before putting any loot on the line. My suggestion would be to warm up in either Elim or Shootout. I would say Elim is better just because it gives you more range. 5-10 to 10 minutes and you'll have the chance to use any and all weapon types in the game in any variety of different methods slash ranges. Playing a bit of Elim will help you find what weapon class you're comfortable with that day and combine that with the context of your overall playstyle to make the absolute best decision for you. To add even more to this, I remember a while back Chris made a video saying his number one tip to new players was was to play Elim before doing any encounters, in order to learn the fundamentals of Vigor's gunplay. And even if you're a veteran player, taking that first casual game to warm up and see how you're playing that day can make a massive difference. For example, say you're a pretty basic player. Your overall playstyle typically leans towards automatic assault rifles, but on this particular day, you're getting a lot more kills with long range rifles in your Elim rounds. In that case, I would compromise between the two and think of guns that have the following characteristic. Something better than a 4 shot kill with good accuracy to reward precision in aiming, but it also needs to be fairly light with decent fire rate and mag capacity to make sure it's forgiving enough for you to be comfortable with. That lands me on four possible guns for this specific scenario, the VZ-52, the ZAM-72, and the G3-SG-1. They both play pretty similarly, just the normal G3 is better in third person while the SG-1 is better in first. Now you might be thinking that the VZ-52 is kind of a wild card here, but its reload speed is so fast and its fire rate is equally impressive, so I would consider it to be closer in playstyle to assault rifles than actual marksman rifles. Either way, all of these are built for very very capable mid to long range with their own independent sacrifices and gains in between. Now I know I said that I would find the perfect gun specifically, but I picked these four in order for a reason. They all fit a roughly similar purpose that aligns with the given points, but are all of varying costs, getting to my third point of available resources. You can't run a ZAM-72 if you don't have any, and there's a pretty substantial divide in the community between those who are just starting and have very little resources, and those who have massive surpluses because they've been playing for quite a while. 
You can only pick a gun that's within your price and resource range, and that may not even necessarily be linked to rarity because of POIs. Let's say you have 5 of all of these, but you have just the plan for the normal G3. If that's the case, then the G3 is probably your right option. If you just opened a crate that gave you 3 ZAM72s, then that's probably the better option. I think you guys get the point that it's a matter of all of these different factors combined in order to find the right match for a given moment. And finally, to add on to this whole equation, we have number 4, the environment. Now, the major piece of this is that you need to change guns depending on what maps are in Rotate, and specifically your strengths and weaknesses on those maps. If Felcanton is in Rotate, it may be a better idea to run snipers in order to play that distance, but if the maps are Drog and Fisk, you may want to lean towards faster firing alternatives. This also applies when you're in the match. If you brought something built for longer range, don't push people and expect to win in close quarters. Pick your gun and adapt your playstyle to its handling, not the other way around. Another major part of this environment concept is your teammates. Always ask what your teammate is using before queuing and use that information to adapt your loadout accordingly. If your duo is running a DMR type weapon, then you have a few choices to make depending on your own compatibility with them as a teammate. You can either play an MG to rain down very effective long range fire support or extreme close range DPS at the cost of maneuverability. Or also run a DMR to be extremely effective together at the same engagement distances. Or you can even fill their weaknesses by using an SMG or close range assault rifle to push while they provide support. This team play dynamic will depend on both of your trust as a duo and independent skill levels with your loadouts, so try and coordinate a consistent tactic before getting hands on with whatever map you're playing. This gets even more complicated if you add a trio into the mix because you can really mix and match different tactics slash playstyles to maximize your efficiency, but it can also cause conflictions where people have overlap or disagreements because of that. More often than not, if you see a trio get wiped with very limited effort from a solo or enemy team, it's because they either lack communication or didn't use each other's guns to the maximum efficiency that they should. Different gun types have different roles in a team, and it's important to acknowledge that in every single match that you play. Sorry, this kind of just became its own mini rant, but I wanted to get that out there as well. Vigor's weapon choice is broad, and constantly growing with each season. And with that comes a change in the game's tactics that complicates weapon choice even further. But really, more than anything, it's about knowing your own comfortabilities with Vigor's gunplay and the more niche aspects of certain guns that you like. I mentioned at the start of the video that I might make a part 2 to this that goes deeper in depth about the concept of finding a quote unquote main, as having a loadout to fall back on repeatedly and learn the deeper nuances of also has its advantages in comparison to the changing on the fly method I've suggested in this video. So if you guys are interested in how I find a main, there's a bit more I can talk about, but let me know what you want to see in the comments below. Either way, I hope I helped you feel more prepared for your next Vigor encounter. That's all I've got for you guys today. This has been Bobo Rail from the Christopher Beast channel, and I'll catch you all in the next one.